welcome to Local Authors with Camille Nasser. I am Camille Nasser. I have a wonderful subject that we're going to discuss today, something that's really deep into my heart. And for this, I have the guest, my guest here, Tripti Thomas Travers. Welcome, Tripti. Tell us. Thank you, Camille. Um, thank you. Tell us um, uh, what this wonderful project is that you have. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me on this show. I'm absolutely delighted to be here and also delighted to meet someone who has some of the same interests, specifically uh, literature in general, but uh, literacy for all kids and boys in particular. Um, That's what we're going to be talking about is literacy for boys. Okay. okay. Why? Um, so, um, the reason that I'm talking about this is that I got interested in this topic a couple of years ago. Right. Um, and um, at the moment, I am uh, not just um, an artist and a freelance writer, but I'm also a blogger. And right. my blog is called bookishboys.com. Bookishboys.com, right. okay. Um, and, the, and the idea is to have a place where parents uh, who have sons um, or caregivers of any kind can and are struggling to find the right reading material or resources can come and find a whole host of uh, activities they can do, uh, yeah. resources they can access, and most importantly, books and audiobooks that, uh, that uh, most boys out there that I know would enjoy. Okay, I have, I have a ton of questions. Okay. And it's, uh, as I said, it's a really dear uh, point to me because as a kid, I didn't read, mm -hmm. and I think there are a lot of boys that don't read. Um, the evidence is that uh, girls read a lot more mm -hmm. than boys read. Uh, it depends, um, re related to books, it depends on the jo genre. For example, in romance novels, 85% are uh, read by, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. whereas current, current events, there's a slight majority of uh, men that read current events. Um, but still, the, the overwhelming percentage of uh, readers are female. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a shame. I want to advocate for literacy. I've talked about this on other shows, and I'm so glad that you can uh, give us some insights. So, where do you start? Parents, right? Um, um, that's right. Um, I think you're absolutely right that the big picture is that there is very long-term research uh, that does show um, that uh, long-term studies that do show that there is a, a gender reading gap, especially in the kindergarten through 12, uh, uh, 12th grade years, um, almost for, for many decades now, and it's across most countries and across every grade level. Uh, that girls tend to do better on reading assessments and read more than boys. This is uh, sort of the, the standard right. research. The good news is that if you want to encourage your kids, yes. your boys to read, there's never been a better time. Um, so uh, we can go down the list of all the strategies that, that there are. All right, let's do that. Uh, let's okay. do that. Let's okay. go down the list. Okay. What are some of so, the specific challenges for um, boys? So again, I, I, let me uh, step back and say that I am not a literacy specialist. Um, I, I really got into this topic because um, I am an avid reader myself growing up. Yes. And when I had uh, my children and I became a parent, I wanted to make sure that they uh, absorbed that And you had two boys. Well. And then I had two boys right. and I had five nephews. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my, my world suddenly got filled up with my sons, mm -hmm. their friends. And so I really got interested in this topic of how do we get uh, these children uh, to read uh, and become sort of more compassionate, empathetic, right. and active members and yes. literate members of, of society. So that's kind of the big, there's a big puzzle about getting kids to read more. I feel like I'm working on my little piece of the puzzle, which is how do I get these boys to read more and I did a ton of research when uh, when my kids were little okay. and I continue to do. Uh, so I'm a transplant to this country uh, and one of the big things that I love about the U.S. is the public library system. Uh, uh, especially uh, New England. New, uh, uh, yes, I, I, I don't right. have a basis for comparison but really we are so lucky. Yeah. And so I kind of started haunting the local public libraries that, uh, that, that we were at. And I was looking for genres, but, uh, uh, you know, nonfiction books, fiction books yeah. that would work. And I realized that there's more, there's more than just the genres to look at. There's yeah. all different types of formats. So as I was saying, there's never been a better time to be a parent or a 
caregiver who wants to encourage uh, kids or boys to read All right. because there are audiobooks, there are e-books, there are great movies based on books, there are graphic well, novels, all them. of that stuff. Let's Just take, take them, them one at a time. Yeah, audiobooks. <laughs> um, um, now, there was a study that showed that the same part of the brain uh, is uh, used when you're listening to a book as when you're reading a book. Is that right? So, yes. That's fascinating. Yeah. I have Do you theory. advocate audiobooks? I or? absolutely advocate audiobooks, particularly for reluctant readers. Uh, I have a theory that once a child has listened to a story, they are actually more interested in seeing that story as a written piece of literature. So we've uh -huh. really baked audiobooks into our lives. My children know if they get into the car with me, we're going to be listening to an audiobook. Oh, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what I do. I, I, have an audio, I have an audiobook uh, ready. Anytime I'm driving, I'm listening to an audiobook. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's just, um, I've become, so as an adult, I'd always you know, listen to books on tape and so on. Uh -huh. Then as a parent, I found out that there is just a vast literature and the people who read these books are, I mean, they narrate the books out aloud. Okay. are true artists. Some of them are just spectacular. Yes, oh yeah, that's right. They're real actors oh, and they, they bring the book up to life. Absolutely. So let okay. me talk about one of my favorite books. Yes? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Audio books. I mean, there are so many. I could I could spend the entire time we have together talking about yes. all of the great yes. audio okay. books. But one of my favorites that... You're going to you're gonna have to leave me a list later on so <laughs> I can get to those, those books and read them. Yeah, Absolutely. Them. You know what I'll do is I'll post on uh, Bookish uh, Boys um, a list of some of the books that we talk about. This is this your show. your uh, blog, bookishboys.com. That's okay, right. Okay, we're talking with uh, Tripti Thomas here. Go ahead. So one of my favorites to get kids really interested uh, in, uh, in, in allowing you to listen to books on tape is uh, the famous book by Shel Silverstein, Where the Sidewalk Ends. Right. It's a famous book of poetry. Yeah. We all know it. But I don't know if a lot of parents know that Shel Silverstein actually did a comprehensive reading of all his poems and these are available as an audiobook it was Grammy award winning at some point uh -huh. and it is just a superb oh, reading oh I see because I you see get by the author himself the author, absolutely the poet the yeah. artist read and he has this absolutely inimitable voice it's very raspy and kind of conspiratorial so he's 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 kind of I've said this on my blog post about this topic He's kind of like a mischievous uncle that's trying to get your kids to do all kinds of mischievous things like yes. miss school. Oh. And like my favorite yeah. one, which I don't advise uh, kids to follow, is how do you know windows open? You throw uh. a stone through. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the kids just they, love, they love this. this stuff. Yeah, they yeah. love this stuff. Yeah. They just laugh it up. And then maybe later, you know, you have the book lying around on a coffee table and and I guarantee you, your child will pick that book up to see what these words look like on the page, what the illustrations look like. Interesting. That's a great I, strategy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just love that. And I could go down, as I said, there are tons of books like that that uh, sort of can spark an interest. Um, and also, audiobooks help you um, uh, tackle topics that a child might not naturally gravitate towards. Right, okay, yeah. So you're going to post some of these books on um, on your website, yeah. right? I on posted a ton on it. You just go to bookishboys.com and click on the link that says audiobooks. That's very and helpful. You'll, you'll come uh, up with okay. a whole list, and it's, you know, divided by age groups. So okay, so my, my, next, uh, my next question, texting. Is that, is that literature? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's literature, but I... I do know that it is. It can be a huge distraction, right? Are you talking about like literally texting, social yeah, media? Yeah, texting. So, so uh, you use the letter U instead of you. Um, oh. Is that? Is that um, you mean in the when when it's in a, a book form? No, no. When people are texting with one another, they're using the letter, oh, yeah, the shortcut short methods. Uh, I think it's. Is that, I think, Camille, it's it's the tide. You can't fight the tide. Yeah, <laughs> so no. we're going to go with it and say that, you know, that is social media. It's part of our children's lives. And um, right now, my kids are pretty restricted in terms of how much social media they can use and so on. But it's 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 going to be the, the, the way of the future. Yeah. However, is it literature? No, I think we can agree. Yeah, but I, I think reading uh, the labels on a package mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah. Reading just just reading the billboards, reading um, because it 
shows curiosity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to read the label on a billboard uh, or the label on a package or um, uh, the instructions or something, um, you're probably going to read a book because you're you're motivated to find out. I do think it's it's a very early strategy to get some uh, early readers and even reluctant readers to start looking at whole words so they know how to put together sounds but they don't know sometimes how it applies to their real life so you're driving down the street with your four or five year old who's now learned how to put together you know some um, uh, some sounds and then you point to the street name or the stop sign they already know that the sign says stop uh, but now they can actually they see the practical implications of what they're what they're reading yeah. and then when you're in a grocery store with them you start reading the names of all the cereals they like it's a really great strategy to get early readers to be engaged yeah. in the importance of reading I totally agree with you yeah yeah, yeah. okay so yeah um, um, so some of the listeners know that I have a uh, um, a charitable foundation called the Curiosity Foundation mm -hmm. and one of the goals of the Curiosity Foundation is to increase literacy mm -hmm. because I think we just have a better world when 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 people are literate and mm -hmm. I think we'll have less war mm -hmm. when, when people do you agree you know, less war less aggression uh, I think I yeah I, I think mm -hmm. that I think that from reading can come compassion empathy understanding of where different people are coming from what the different cultural contexts are absolutely I I do think it could lead to a better world um, and it's one of the reasons why I do want boys to read more um, mm. and uh, and so that they can be equal compassionate partners with with their with with other boys with men with with uh, with girls and so on yeah. um, so uh, and absolutely in this day and age it is essential to be literate to be able to understand yes. Uh, the news and to be, um, you know, able to uh, to not just digest the news but analyze it. So reading yeah, skills. That's are uh, yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah, this is local authors with Camille Nasser, and I have Tripti Thomas with with me here, and, and a really fascinating subject to get uh, kids to read. This is a great subject for parents, of course. Um, I want to play devil's advocate for a little bit. Okay, I think this country is a very masculine country. Uh, very aggressive uh, country um, and uh, we've had a, a lot of wars, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, enslaved the African Americans, um, uh, decimated the uh, Native American population and done many of these things. I'm sorry I'm going to get really political here. Um, and I th and uh, also we've uh, done the space program we uh, sent the man to the moon. We've uh, we have uh, computers, Silicon Valley, GPS. Um, we've expanded uh, uh, the the country uh, uh, and so on. To me, those things are are related. Mm -hmm. If we get boys to be bookish, are we gonna miss? some of that aggression. I mean, Silicon Valley is very, very male. There's real little diversity uh, there. Um, the space program was very, very male. Uh, maybe it's changing right now. Um, do you think with kids, boys reading books is somehow going to make that less? I know this is a philosophical <laughs> question, okay? Um, I, I, I don't. First of all, I don't think innovation and aggression are necessarily linked. I'd have to look on uh, to the research on that. Um, and I think some of the people that we look to uh, in the history of this country and around the world are extremely erudite people. Uh, you know, talk about uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln or all of these people. So I, uh, right. who, uh, so I think some of the people that have, have helped us make great leaps throughout the world. Every every country has its history of things yeah. that they should be embarrassed about, things that they should be proud about. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think that uh, that, that, is, um, that those two are necessarily linked. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I, I do think there is a bit of an artificial tension between boys who read and boys who play sports, for instance. That if you're bookish, you can't be sporty. And I really, I, I actually call very deliberately the blog Bookish Boys in order to be able to reclaim uh, that slightly pejorative term and emphasize that you can be all of those things. Right. Uh, my sons, they play sports very avidly. Uh, they're passionate about their sports and watching their sports teams. Uh, they also love their video games and 
they love books so you can i mean this is a sample size not just of two i know a lot of other young men and who are connected yeah. to them yeah. who do all of those things um, and uh, I, I think we well, could absolutely use uh, some yeah. more feminine, uh, you know, I really emphasize in the books that I, uh, I recommend strong female characters, empathy, history, uh, and history of all kinds, stuff that we sometimes want to hide our faces from, but we should take a look at. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that there's... I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I was just playing devil's yeah, yeah. advocate there, but uh, I mean, some of our, the really, the great people that we have, the... Uh, John Kennedy, Martin Luther King, they were avid readers and writers mm -hmm. and uh, very beautiful with the language. Um, Roosevelt, um, now, now it's turned the other way. We, we've turned away from that, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, we're I trying something new and maybe we'll learn it. It may not work. <laughs> so yeah, not maybe, working. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will, okay. So, um, so, uh, so give us some examples of the books uh, that re you reviewed. There's one about um, a horse, a refugee that you had on your blog. Yeah. Tell us a little about that. Um, so this is one of the books I love. It's called um, A Long Walk to Water. Uh -huh. And it is a, a lovely story. Um, it is written by Linda Supak. Linda Supak is a um, you know well-known um, uh, children's book author, and she based it on the life of uh, of a young man who is still living and very active. His name is Salva Dutt, and uh, he comes out of this context of the persistent war in in Sudan. Mm -hmm. And he uh, spent much of his life. It's a it's a it's a heart wrenching tale. So he was, uh, you know, chased because of this the civil war. He was chased out of his home, and he wandered from country to country looking for refuge, from yes. refugee camp to refugee yes. camp. Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, eventually, after many many years, made it um, made it out. Uh, he was adopted by a family. Right. But now he has gone, he started a foundation, he has gone back to his original home yeah. and he has started this project of digging wells uh, because he's realized that some of the conflict stems from a lack of resources and yeah. conflict over water and basic resources like right. that. Uh, so it is a lovely tale. Again, this is, uh, this is an example where I, I, I love, the reason why I love audiobooks. Yeah. It may be a book that a, a child, not every child is going to be willing to pick up this book and read it or read it even if you give it yeah. to them, but they're going to listen to it on a, a book on yeah. tape and then yeah. maybe look at it later. But even if they don't, they've got the story. They understand the context of this war. And right now the word refugee is very much in the... It, yeah. You know, in our in our local dialogue, mm -hmm. all the time, every city is having yeah. this discussion around the country, yeah. around uh, the world. Yeah. Uh, who are these people? You know, why why have they left their homes? What has made them run so far? What yeah. are the conditions that they're running from? And this is the kind of tale that will build an understanding amongst children and the parents who listen along with their children. Absolutely, yeah. It creates a really again to go back to audiobooks, It creates a really wonderful shared experience for both the parent who's driving the car and the kids who are listening in the back to have discussions later on. So yeah, it, it's, yeah. I really highly recommend that audiobook. Yeah. I, I think um, one of the things about literacy and, and reading or, or listening to an audiobook is that you, um, you grapple with ideas, whether mm -hmm. you're reading a Western Mm -hmm. um, or uh, or Shakespeare, you're grappling with ideas, mm -hmm. and this is really very important because it it takes you outside of your set um, uh, ideas and and it makes you want to find out more about other cultures, other uh, other people, and so on. I, I know this in the Museum of Science. I'm a volunteer at the Museum mm -hmm. of Science, and we um, we have a lot of films there, the, the IMAX films. And one of the things they try to do is show uh, heroes mm -hmm. who uh, are usually young people, uh, men and women, mm -hmm. young uh, people who are scientists. Mm -hmm. And I think it... it Try to, they try to get across the idea that you can do this too. Mm -hmm. You can be a scientist. Mm -hmm. you, can, um, you can learn about things. Yeah. But being a scientist is um, not just, uh, just sitting there around in the laboratory. It requires a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, so, um, and I, can, I, can I continue on that yeah. point? 
And it's not just saying that you you can do this, you can be this one too, but that your skills or the, your your inner talent is something that it can be utilized, right? It's yeah. it's it's okay to be who you are. You might be somebody who's interested yeah. in birds or eggs or whatever it is. There there is a place for that. Yeah. Um. And uh, and I, I can I mention one book in that context? Sure, sure. One of my yeah. favorite. Also, this is both an audio book, a great audio book, and a great book. It's called The Dreamer, and it's by Pam Munoz Ryan. Um, and it's about this little boy. His name is Neftali Reyes. You might know who this is. No, no, okay. the dreamer. Uh, the dreamer. No, Neftali Reyes. He was, uh, you know, this young young boy, and his parents just couldn't understand why he was. Uh, they just didn't appreciate his uh, his uh, his dreaminess. He was always dreaming, always collecting yeah. little things from around the place, uh, and his pockets were always full of little pine cones and birds' nests and things like that. Well, at the end of the day, after a lot of difficult times with his parents, uh, you know, he ends up changing his name and he becomes Pablo Neruda. Oh, oh, the most yeah. widely read yeah. poets in the world. The yes. most widely read poets. Oh, in the world. I see, I see. I didn't so know the story. Is, yeah. Yeah, it is a wow. lovely story. It's a beautiful book, uh -huh. and it's it's just a wonderful way to show a child that you know you may not fit the mold, uh, yeah. but there is a path for you follow your dream uh, and you know you, 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 you have you something, change the world. You have to, something to give yeah. yeah you have something important for the world you're, yeah. you're a unique person okay good so um let's c continue what mm -hmm. else uh what well you know uh, the last generation or is a generation or whatever some years ago everybody was reading harry potter mm -hmm. and that was just a wonderful thing for literacy for mm -hmm. bo boys and girls oh, I don't, yeah. yeah what's what are people reading now what are kids reading now um, I think uh, following on that, there's just been a huge, you know, explosion of, of, of the fantasy uh, genre. There have been a oh, lot of oh, kind of oh. a lot of copycats, but I see some of the big things have been the Percy uh, Jackson series by Rick Riordan. Um, so that's about, uh, and that's what I love about that series is that it's created an explosion of interest in Greek uh, mythology, and he's gone on. For, so Percy Jackson is. A young man who finds out that he's a demigod, so he's actually the son. Oh, yeah. He's the half son. He's a son of Zeus and one of his dalliances uh, with, I think, a human. You're going into and, a genre <laughs> I don't know anything about. So, it's yeah, fantastic. That's right. It's yeah. a whole series about uh, about sort of demigods in uh, their youth. Interesting. And it's just. It, it's it's a it's a massive I write about phenomenon. Greece. I, write, oh, really? I should I should I should look at that. Oh my right gosh! Now. Yeah, and from and that is a whole uh, like just a vast um, explosion of interest in Greek mythology. Now Rick Rowden has gone on to writing about Norse mythology, if I'm not mistaken, Roman mythology, and maybe even Egyptian. Uh -huh. And so each of these series that he's created is creating a sort of a, a side interest in mythology. Yes. Any young person you ask who is a reader, you ask these days about uh, you know, who are all the Greek gods, who are the demigods, who are the muses, they will know, know them. You know what I should write, I, I, should, I told you Museum of Science, uh, I should write something about dinosaurs because all the kids are really, oh. really fascinated with dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. no, so what's, what's on your bookshelf? What's right on now. my bookshelf? Yeah. Um, so I have a little section on my blog, which is called "What's What's on Our Bookshelf?" or "What are we reading today?" Uh, okay. What are we reading these days? All right. All right. So, uh, so what 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 we're reading right now is we've got a great audio book called uh, "Chasing Lincoln's uh, Killer," which is about the two week um, you know national manhunt for John Wilkes. Uh, right. Booth. Right. It's, yeah. it's a great deal. It's a little gruesome, but it's fantastic. Uh, and my younger one, who's 10, is now wanting to read the book. Which really? Is great. Yes. Yeah. That uh, seems very adult. But it's, it, it wasn't initially an adult book, but it's been uh, sort of condensed and made simpler for kids. The name of the author is James Swanson, I believe. Yeah. And this is... Well, th that's a great, uh, because it introduces history, history. in America and that's slavery true. and everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. It, it, it really does. Yeah. It's a fantastic book. Uh, my uh, younger son is reading a series that was given to him by his aunt. It's a series called um, the Bad Unicorn series. So it's a series of three uh -huh. books. I think it's called the Bad Unicorn, Fluff Dragon, and the Good Ogre. I think those are the three. Well, I, I, really, <laughs> I really have some work to do to catch up on all this. He seems to be. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm rushing to try to catch up with, yeah. with what my kids and their friends are reading. Yeah. So those are, that's what he's reading. And uh, my older one, his 
is reading a series called the Leviathan Trilogy by Scott Westerfeld. So it's about the uh, First World War, but written in a sort of a reimagining the First World War from a steampunk perspective. Now, I, I uh, what a what perspective? A steampunk. So sort of the the you know mechanics of all these machines, and there are some fantasy elements. Oh, 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 I see. I see. A steampunk. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So he, he's really enjoyed that and he's just finished it and I think he is about to start the Maze Runner. He's the you know, Maze Runner series again, which has been, I think, made into a movie. And so yeah, on. yeah. So that those are young adults, right? Yeah, yes, YA books, yeah. He's right? He's 12 yeah. now and definitely in the, you know, reading young adult books. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the future plan of um, bookishboys.com, your, your blog? What's, what, what do you see? <laughs> Do you see uh, like you're changing the world? What, what are you doing? <laughs> Camille, I wish I knew. I would love for it to become a place where uh, people come and find all kinds of things. I, uh, I would too. I would love for, for parents, for this to be a great uh, resource for, uh, for parents. Yeah. yeah. I do. I look at it as kind of a treasure chest. So it's a very uh, curated set of, um, of suggestions, uh, things I found along the way. And it's not just book suggestions, but there are also um, resources that they might not be aware of. I'll just mm. make a quick plug for one, because I've mentioned audiobooks a lot, and I want parents to know they don't necessarily have to always go out and try to buy these things from Audible or Libro or some right, of the other right. sites. Can... There is a fantastic resource called Hoopla, um, and Hoopla is a um, it, it is an application that's offered by libraries. I think some 1,200 libraries across the country offer it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to my website, it's called uh, bookishboys.com slash Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A. You can fi figure out how to find out whether your library offers it. And through Hoopla, you would need your library ID. Through it, you can download hundreds of um, books, audiobooks, movies, television shows, everything. And this is all for free. Okay, we're coming to the end. Uh, great, fascinating conversation with Tripti Thomas Travers. Uh, this is Local Authors with Camille Nasser. Her blog is uh, bookishboys.com. It was really a pleasure to have you, and thank you so much.